Hey guys, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about stress in trading and finding the right time of day to trade. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out the free content available at www.tier1trading.com. Have any, any of you guys ever actively like traded range bars or like lower time frames? Range bars are worse than lower time frames, but it is, it's a different level of stress, um, which is it's not bad, but it it, it wears on you. It, it is it is. Imagine um, I'm trying to I'm trying to I, I, I don't know the psychological in and outs of this, but so. I'm in a, um, yeah, so I am always in a heightened sense of awareness, right? Because I am, I am naturally paranoid of everything. So it, it's, I blame it on product of my environment. I grew up in a place where if you get caught slipping, then that's it for you, right? So I'm, I always have this heightened sense of paranoia, awareness of like consistently running through game plans in if then, really if then processes in my head. Right. Uh, if he does this, then what do I do? If this happens, then what, how do I do this? Right. We're talking the other day about grabbing kids and stuff like that. Or, or there's an unfortunate event in my hometown. There was a, a train ride. Um, someone got assaulted and raped on a train and people just stood there and did nothing. Um, so, again, th- those are examples of always like in my head, like, if that were to happen, like how do I react and all that stuff? Right. So it's this heightened sense of awareness, but it's a massive amount of stress because it's like a, a never ending stressful situation. Uh, and I'm sure that has all types of mental and physical um, impacts on you. Trading is the same way, right? Trading, if you're, you know how trading feels, guys, right? Like trading, like it's not a stress-free thing. Like even if you're on a four-hour chart, like how do you feel watching a candle, right? Bobby's got to set up at 82.50 and it's like at 82 even. He's sitting there like, Ooh, okay, <laughs> right? He's consistently reviewing his plan. He, it's in the stressful state or imagine you're, you're in a trade. It is a stressful state. Imagine being on that alertness for like elongated periods of time, right? That's tough, man. That's tough. That's why, I mean, that's, there's a very high suicide rate in trading, but that's why like I couldn't imagine being a full-time day trader, like someone that like trades from, you know, I day traded a few hours a day. That's all I got. Um, but I couldn't imagine someone that goes from like eight in the morning to like, or open to close. Um, someone that goes like nine to, nine to four or something like that. Like I couldn't imagine. That's uh, it's it's crazy. Um, but that's why they also you know these firms and stuff. They have people to talk to on the trading floor, and it's mandatory. Like hey, you got to get in there once a week and 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 vent and and it's a, it's a, a crucial crucial part of that industry. Um, or just, I think if you allocate, let's say two hours to trading every day, um, it could be, it, then it could be achievable. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta chunk it up. Like I'm good for three hours. I can do three hours. And obviously there's, there's some work in breaks. Um, you gotta be quick with the breaks. If you're in a range bar jump, just worked on breaks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, that, that was for me, I found like that was my, that was my, my kind of mesh zone. I, I tried the open the close thing before and it was, it wasn't just the the stress. It wasn't just the stress, but it was the I could never take any time off ever, right? Because you never know when that signal is going to come. So it was like, hey, um, wife wants to go out on a date on Thursday at two o'clock, right? Swing trading, I could schedule that in. I could be like, okay, you know, what are my setups? Two o'clock, cool. That's after the one o'clock close. Uh, long as I as long as I check it by by five, I'm good to go. Right. Let's just be back by five or, you know, be at a phone near five. And typically five o'clock, there's no signal happening at five anyway. But you get the point. You can plan it out. Um, all of a sudden, like I'm sitting here like, you know, what if it's an active day? And, and I got into a lot of trouble doing this because it would be an active day of trading. And I'm like, hey, I got to I, I I can't go. I got this setup that might happen. So I need to just be by this computer and watch it. Um, and I got in a lot of trouble for canceling dates and, and and whatnot because of the markets and well, yeah, lucky she's very under, understanding um but yeah that, that happened numerous times where i'd be like yeah hey, we're gonna we're gonna go here at this time okay yeah let's, let's do it an hour later 
let, 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 two, two hours later because it's, it's it's almost complete. It's almost complete. All right, it completed. Now I, I gotta watch it and manage it. So let's um, can we do it tomorrow? Um, how would you work out to allocate specific hours for day trading? Um, you mean like how would I work out the hours I trade, or like how do I work out while I'm day trading? Sorry, that, that's only that's only a question someone that's always in the weight room would ask. <laughs> like, are you referring to like how do I set my workout hours around my day trading, or like how do I work out what hours? Um, oh, um, I would pick the most active hours. I mean, depending on your strategy. So the question is, how would you work out which hours you trade? So depending on your strategy, um, you may notice in your back testing that, or you should notice in your back testing that there are certain hours of the day, because this is a lower time frame. There are certain hours of the day when you're going to get the majority of your signals. So like I can tell you this from experience day trading for me, there is a massive difference between, and, and, yeah, and your lifestyle, of course. So first and foremost, you want to, First and foremost, always set it around your lifestyle. So if there's that, that's a very good point, Bobby. If there's something you want to or need to do, right, you always block those times off. Like again, I'm not trading 12 o'clock at night because I'm sleeping. So like that's just a non-negotiable. So first and foremost, find the hours that you can trade. So if you look at, if you kind of draw out on a piece of paper, like the hours of the day, and I, I literally do this. So to take a calendar, draw out all the hours of the day from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. So for me, it would be like five o'clock would be the beginning. Um, 10 o'clock would be night. So I know I can't trade anything before five o'clock. I can't trade anything past 10. So for me now, I also know, hey, I'm a family man. So like, I also wouldn't want to do anything past six o'clock because that time is dedicated towards kids and stuff. So I can block off from, from six to 10 or whatever like that. Um, I'm looking for the right button here. There we go. You can block off from from six to 10 and now that's gone as well. So now you got this chunk of time right here. Um, so let's say that chunk of time is free that you have no obligations, there's no work or anything like that. When you do your back testing, if you track what time your signals occur, and as a day trader, you should um, attract what time they occur, you're gonna notice a trend that the majority, and it's not necessarily, I mean, you may, I've had six uh, systems where I noticed a trend about winners and losers, where winners, the majority of the winners came during a certain time, um, or the majority of the winners became during a certain day. I was just talking to a trader about Jason's FTB strategy um, the other day. Remember, the FTB has a very specific time and when you can trade it, right? Six to ten. Well, there's a reason it's only six to ten because it's a, it's looking for a specific move movement in the market that tends to happen during that time. So you'll notice that with your, your day trading as well, where you'll see like, hey, my majority of my setups come between, let's say, 8 o'clock New York, 7 o'clock New York, and 11 o'clock New York. And then after 11 o'clock New York, maybe there's like a, a little bit, but not as much. So right there, you kind of have your, you know, assuming that fits with your lifestyle, you have your magic, your, your, your kind of magic mesh point. Does that make sense? You can also take things into account, um, uh, but it's a little bit hard because it can depend on when you, where, you, when you, where you live, but I was gonna say news events as well. But I would say in general, the busiest, so, so the, the busiest time of the market is gonna be that the London Open and then the New York London crossover. Right? I apologize for anyone trading the Asia markets out there, but no one cares about the, that time, I'm sorry. It just, they, they don't, it just, you know, aside from some random Aussie and New Zealand news or some random Japanese news that pops up like two o'clock in the morning, no one cares. I'm, I'm just nothing personal, right? So in my experience, the London Open is typically the busiest. That's kind of like the startup, like, hey, let's start the day. And then you go and then it's the New York mesh, uh, mesh time, New York, London. So the New York London mesh time is this exact time that we that we trade the live room. Essentially, it's from like I look at it from like a seven o'clock to like a ten o'clock or eleven o'clock. It's the second half of the London session and the first half of the New York session. The second half of the New York session, London's close, so you automatically lose liquidity. Right? These are the two major markets, so you lose liquidity from half the market there. And then again, you think about people that are day trading or, or, or positioning aside from they're not aside from some type of news event, 
no one's really trying to do anything towards the end of the day. You'd rather start fresh. So in my experience, and again, it may change from strategy to strategy, the busiest time in the markets um, is going to be that mesh point where you have the two largest markets actively trading. So I say 7 to 11, some may say like 8 to 11, depending on, you know, how you look at it. I, I like to get in a little, I would prefer to get in a little bit early. So like if, if 8 is 8 or 8.30 is the technical opens and stuff like that, uh, not not a Forex over 24-7, but other markets, um, get in an hour before. That way you have an hour to kind of look at your setups and, and, and plan. Um, we know that most news events come out at 8.30, New York, right? So, but you're... It, it'll be interesting when you if you do like a little a graph when you do your testing of just like times um i think you'll see a pretty i think you'll see a pretty cool pattern of uh, trade frequency you may even see a pattern of again winners and losers and if you can find if you can find a legit pattern in that then that's a that's massive if you know like hey my win percentage gets progressively worse once i trade after 10 o'clock hey dummy don't trade after 10 o'clock um but yeah, it's cool. It, it, it's it was um again I I I I I wouldn't be surprised if I went back to day trading. Um, I, I I do enjoy it. Um, I don't know if it'll be after. It's hard while teaching, so it may be after teaching or, or maybe if, if teaching changes a little bit. Um, but I I did really I I really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed doing it. I don't I didn't like the I don't like the the shackles of needing to do it. If that if that makes sense. Um, and the stress. It's a lot less stressful not doing it that way. Hope you enjoyed the show as always like and follow the podcast also if you want some free training make sure you head over to www.tier1trading.com as well as check out my youtube channel youtube.com slash akil stokes